hello welcome back to the channel in this simple video i'm going to show you how you can create simple tabs using the materialized css framework so this is going to be a very very simple video stick around and, and i show you how they are done so this is a simple live example we have this simple tab we can click and go to jquery we can click and go to php section you can click and go to the css section and you can see we have that simple swipeable feature we can swipe if you're on smartphone you can easily just drag without clicking these tabs so you can swipe you feel me so when i refresh this page we are going to lose everything and we're going to be starting from scratch so just go to materializecss.com click this get started button and i'm going to be using the content delivery network links so the cdns i'm just going to copy all this so make sure you get some boilerplate save your file anywhere that you will be using right now i'm on the chromebook and i have this simple editor called the code pad so i'm going to paste my links here in the head section but I'm going to take the JavaScript file and place it below or before the closing body tag. So this way, I usually like placing my JavaScript. I can take out these comments. So when we, we are having this, that means we have the materialized CSS framework linked to our page. So when I go back, and refresh this page and i place ctrl u to see the source code when i click these links we shall be able to access these files online so the css file and the javascript file awesome what i'm going to do first is create a simple div if you have ever used the front end framework you know what it means a div with a class of container so this one will leave some fixed equal width on both sides so on the right hand side and left hand side so our content will be somehow placed in the middle so this is what this tab does then in this div i'm going to create a child div inside and i'm going to give it a class of row and this is all now designing we are just trying to create a simple layout for our tabs how they are going to be standing on the page and inside this div i'm going to create another div sorry i won't create another div i keep on saying sieve so div and i'm going to give it a class of call and s12 of so this one is short for column so we are creating a column and we are telling it that on small screens that's what s stands for we want you to take all the grid system size i guess the standard size is 12 if you also use bootstrap basically 12 is the limit so we want it to take all the 12 grid system columns then now we start working on our tabs that you saw for our tabs we need to create an ordered list so the l the ul an ordered list then inside this unordered list we create the list items but wait we need to tell the browser that we need tabs so you come to the unordered list opening tag and put the class of tabs so whatever is inside here they are going to be tabs that's what you're telling the browser then inside this list item we put the unc tag so the a tag i know my people call it the a tag but it's the unc tag and here i'm going to put like html so this is what will be visible to the user when they are clicking I'm going to copy this and I paste it like four times three four so the first one is going to be HTML the second one CSS so the choice will be yours I don't know why you'll be creating these tabs but I'm going to show you how they are done and you'll figure out what on how to use them so this one is going to be PHP and lastly let me change so to sql so sql so we need to tell what you are telling the browser that what is inside here they are tabs 
So that means we need to come to the list item and we tell the browser that this is a tab. So this one is going to be a tab. Then for responsiveness, I'm going to put a, a simple column here. And I say a three. So on small screens, it will be taking up three columns. And I will explain this when we try reach that side of showing you how it's responsive on mobile device. So that's when these columns will come in play. So we are telling the browser that this is a tab. So when the user clicks this, they will know all the browser will interpret it as a tab. So we are going to get this, paste it on every list item. As you can see here, so we are telling the browser that the, every element that you see having the class of tab, it's a tab. Very, very simple. So still inside this div, the row, we are going to come here. So this is the first column that we created. Then we are going to just place enter here or return and we create another div. So this div is the content that is going to be displayed to the user or hidden. So I'm just going to put here HTML. So they are going to be in order. I'm going to copy this four times again. Up to some extra space here. And say the second one CSS, PHP, and SQL. So this is what the user will be linking to when they click these tabs. But for now, let us refresh and see what we are having in the browser. So we are having this simple style. So the framework has already known that these are tabs and they are lining them, they are floating them this way. So HTML, CSS, PHP, and SQL. So we don't want these ones to be visible. And to do that, I will show you as we go on. So we need to tell that when the user clicks HTML, we need to display HTML. When they click CSS, we need to display CSS. So to do that, we are going to come and give every element an ID. So this one is going to be having the ID of HTML. This one is going to be having the ID of CSS. So these IDs are user defined. You can call them anything that you want, but so long as you reference to them this side. So this one is going to be having the ID of PHP. And lastly, this one is going to be having the ID of SQL. That's fine. So for us to tell these elements that when they click you, we need you to display this. We need to come to our hyper reference attribute, the one you're seeing here. At first, we left it empty, but we need to come here and set its value to hash or pound symbol or number symbol. So hash HTML. So we reference to this ID that we created here. So hash HTML, then we say hash CSS. So this is the ID that you gave here. As I said, the user define what you put here, make sure it's what you should put here. So we shall say hash PHP and it's the ID here. You can see how it's very, very simple. We are just repeating ourselves. Hash SQL and that's it. So when we come here, there is no different change. Everything is fine. But for every component on Materialize, apart from the CSS components, but these JavaScript components, you need to initialize them. And that's going to be very, very simple. So you come here, right below the script tag that has that library, and we create our internal simple script tags. And first we are going to listen for the document load. So document dot add event listener and i'm going to explain this and the type of event that we want to listen to it's the dom content loaded and we put the callback function so you're asking yourself wow what's this austin so it's the same thing that you write when you're using jquery so you say document dot ready and put this callback function and do this so this is how it's done using jquery and this is how it's done using the materialize oh sorry the vanilla 
JavaScript way. So when you're using plain JavaScript, this is what you write. Then since jQuery is a library for JavaScript, they simplified and used this. So that don't get confused with this. It's the same. Very, very simple. So we need to initialize this. So we're going to create another variable here or oh, a simple variable, not another. We have not yet created any variable. So we're going to create a variable here and I'm going to say my tabs. So this is the name of the variable. Then I'm going to assign it. So this is not an equal sign for <laughs> you guys. It's an equal sign, but in programming, it's an assignment operator. So assign that to document.query selector. And what you want to select is the element with a class of tabs. So this. So we are going to put dot tabs. So we have now selected that element. Then here we use the materialize instance or syntax. We say m dot tabs dot init. So we initialize it. And in this parenthesis, we need to pass in the variable name and the object for which will be full of options. And I'm going to show you that very soon. So when we save this and reload this so all other divs are going to be hidden so now we can easily tab to those individual tabs you can see this area is changing and now all that is working but at first you saw some shadow around these tabs and to do that just come here on the tabs class and just add another z depth so this is how you put shadows on materialize CSS components. And I'm going to use one. And shall be having that simple border around. You can see how it's very, very simple. Then next, and I'm, I'm just going to add another class of hoverable. So when the user hovers over this, see, you get that simple hover. Then lastly let me show you now what i was talking about first wait as you can see we are having some problem here it's past the tabs and we can solve that use by putting an, another simple class here of call s12 of so on every oh on every div that we have created we put another simple column and we saw on small screens we want you to take all the grid system to allow refresh yeah but still we have problem it's too close to the tabs so yeah i'm just going to put my custom class hidden content i'm just going to paste it on every element so this is my class i have just created it and i'm going to put the styling here above so i'm just going to create a, a custom style internal tag here and i'm going to target that class and it's going to be having some margin top of 20 pixels refresh yeah so we're having space from the tabs You can see now, as I promised you, I'm going to show you some extra options that you can pass into this object. So you just, as you can see, it was like that. You come in the middle, place tab. Then we want to make this swipeable. So you saw one users on, on mobile devices to be able to just swipe without using, without clicking these tabs. So to do that, we just come here and write swipeable. swipeable and we shall set it to true by default it's false refresh so when i drag here you can see you can swipe so guys will be on the mobile device we'll be able to swipe without clicking here you get that user experience 
and I want it to be obvious. I had some simple paragraph here. I'm just going to repeat it several times, putting it in these divs. Let's place tab, paste it there, paste it there. I want you to get that feel how it will be like when you have a lot of content inside so this is how it will be looking like and it has different options you can come here we can access the duration oh. duration and by default i think it's 300 milliseconds so this one is a boolean and this one is a number so the duration so this half check out this active line that pink line so when you click there that duration it takes to enter that element or that tab but see when we put it to like 3000 milliseconds and i try to click css see how it will be moving slowly so that's why they made it simple and put it at 300 milliseconds so when the user clicks to directly go to that and now let's say you want php to be the default open element as you can see at first it's html but you may want php to be the active tab when the user comes on the page so to do that you just go up here where php is in the ang tag just put another class of active refresh the page and it will be php that will be active when the user comes on the page you can see very very simple then lastly what do i want what do i want to show you let me just put a simple h1 here h1 and i say tabs and i'll just put a simple class of center and I say pink text. Wow, look at that. So guys, that's it for this tutorial. If this tutorial was useful to you, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it on different social medias, and I'll always see you in the next tutorials. Peace. Oh, guys, wait, before you go, I would like to show you how these tabs will be looking like on a mobile device have a simple emulator here it's called the browser mobile browser emulator so we can click it and we select the type of phone that we want or the size so i'll start with this small one and show you so this is how it will be looking like on a mobile device with this size as you can see when the word is big they truncate it and they put those three dots you can see how it will be looking like so you can even swipe you feel me so that's how it will look like on that mobile device then let us see how it will look like on this device so this is how it will be looking like let's see how it will be looking like on this this is how it will be looking like on this this is how it will be looking like then on the tabs This is how it will be looking like very very simple so that's what i wanted to show you guys i was forgetting something i'll see you in the next tutorials bye